And, you know, Told you it wasn't a good idea. We had like half of a fucking uh, one of those Romeo and Juliet's that this guy brought. Uh, so I had it with me, and the next day I, I, I smoked it on the way home, right? And then I get home, and she goes, "Where the fuck were you?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I'm at work," and she was like, "It no, smells like you were no, drinking." You don't, all smell, day. You don't smell like, like work, what? buddy. No, I you didn't smell like work. <laughs> yo, you the, we're good. We're on the worst parts was that yo when I used to come home from like. Doing an install in like oh, some in, in some girl's house? room, yeah. And it's like oh, and you perfume, smell perfume like all over the place. I come home and smell like she's like, you smell like perfume, and I'm like, I was just doing an install. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and you're late, <laughs> yeah. And I'm late, and, and late. I got home late. I got home like an hour late. And I'm like, nah, I swear I was doing an install. I just sounded. It, it, it starts us off, me, but. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for welcome on welcoming us. This is uh, Fifth Ward Media and Toxic Ass Friends presents one on one. It's not really an interview. It's more like a conversation and a congratulations to my good friend, my brother here, our very own, Sis Coel Alexander, author, New York yeah, Times yeah, bestseller, yeah. and all that in your future. Yeah, I hope so. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we got to use my regular name for this. Coel, Mr. Coel Alexander, the reason why I am Polito Vega, I am your host for this episode today, and the reason we are here, we are here to celebrate and talk about the release and the anticipation behind something. Um, as you guys know, the reason why we created this one-on-one -on -one platform is because we like to motivate, encourage, inspire people who are doing things in within our own community and what better way to do that with someone, one of our very own here who had a dream, a passion, something that he is honestly always talked about and you put the pen to paper literally and got something off the ground that I can say that we're all proud of. With no further ado, the reason we're here, Mr. Coel Alexander, introduce your book, my friend. Yeah, man. So thank you, by the way. Appreciate it. Um, April 28th, next month, uh, my first novel, the first book in the series, The Axe and the Spear, is going to be released on all major platforms, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, even the website that I published it from, um, which they don't, they ain't, they ain't really kicking me no bread, so I don't know if I'm, <laughs> a, you know what I mean, but they, they, you know, their name is all over the paperwork and stuff like that, but I, um, I'm really excited about it. I, I I can't believe I finished it. Every day I wake up and uh, I open this box. You ask my wife every day I come home and I open the box and just look at it again. Like holy shit! Like I actually did, I actually did it. Did it. Did it. Um, yeah. So it's coming out next month. I hope everybody just enjoys the story. Honestly, more than me. You know me. Like when I when I do stuff, I I, I look to make a little bit of money. But usually I do it just because. I either I wanted it. to do it yeah. and I was passionate about it, or I just wanted someone to see that I could. And I hope that that's uh, the message that people get through this. Uh, it's not an interview; it's more like, like I said, a conversation. Because when you're passionate about something and you really hold it dear to you, you're gonna find a way to get it out. So we're gonna yeah. talk about three major points in this. Is one, we're gonna cover some of the stuff in the book, like what it was, what inspired you, that kind of stuff. Uh, second, the actual process of getting the book done and what made you do that. And third the actual rollout distribution and all the nitty gritty geeky shit that gets in <laughs> case people want to have that passion and they, no, they kind of want a little bit more information how to get this done because some people probably tell themselves like my life is a story or their brain is so creative and active that like, they don't know how to get that outlet out so hopefully right. we can inspire some people to get that through so with that going we're just going to talk about where did this come from because this is a thick book <laughs> and i know you for a long time and I'm not that big of a reader, but I'm yeah. gonna definitely dive back. I asked I asked them if I'm gonna get that little Pizza Hut coupon when I'm done with the book. <laughs> do I gotta write an essay. Do I gotta prove that I read it? <laughs> but what did inspire the book? Like what what made you want to get into writing? Yeah, so I always wanted to, and I mean, even we talked about it years ago, and I was like, you know, when you saw me. Uh, carrying around a bunch of books you're always like yo you like you like reading shit i'm like yeah like Dude, no no joke this yeah. really had like two or three work like books yeah, in, in the, the work in truck. the van right so on, on breaks i was just reading stuff like that which came from a, a farther way way further story um in my past but um honestly it all it always clicked it always clicked there you you know and everyone else knows based on the the clothing line and things like that like my uh affinity i guess for mythology and stuff like that and then anything mythology i watch and i don't take it and the stories are just like they're amazing like did that make it easier stories. to go in and write about the subject or or you hold that subject so kind of dear to your heart that you almost feel like sh I, maybe i shouldn't write about this because we've talked about 
two versions of the first book you were going to write. It was either going to be kind of like a life biography kind of story. Right. But I'm glad you went in the in the, in the the fantasy fiction realm because it, it almost allows your creativity to come out. Right, right. It was... um. It was a mixture of both, kind of. Um, one, like I said, there's so many vast stories and variations of it that I've been studying it for so many years that it's, it was easy to come up with your own Character. story. They kind of lay the foundation for you at that point. And the stories are so, some some people will call them outlandish at times and kind of unbelievable. But, but that's the best part of it. Yeah, yeah, once You, you want to dive into a world. Once you're in it, yeah. it's you create your own world. Like, so... My book touches on different parts of mythology and things like that. Some stuff that you can refer to and remember, but completely, it, the, my tale isn't told in the spectrum of mythology. Like, and I mix two mythologies together, which okay. doesn't necessarily happen most of the time. But when you create your own world, you can do whatever you want, right? And this is where it came from. And not to mention, I'm obviously obsessed with this shit like i'm not gonna lie i'm obsessed with it my all my tattoos and mythology like everything is just everything that i do is kind of just surrounded by those stories and i just think they're just like exciting every time i hear a story and they input any kind of mythology in it i'm just automatically excited it doesn't matter and there is a genre for that there's a very big genre and i'm I'm glad you're tapping into that more about like like the actual what gets you going for the idea of writing the book, like how did it how did it start? Where you just start writing notes because some people might not think to themselves like, "Can I write? Right. Do I even right. have?" Because you've been reading so many books, how do you lay that out? How do right. you start the book? That was my fear at first. Uh-huh. I thought that since I read so many books, that there's no way that I could write one that was original or because you have too many stuff. In yeah, because you, you, you have be too much stuff that you're referring to, right? So. What happened and was... And how do you introduce a character? Something yeah. Simple that so that goes to you... That is actually a benefit of you reading so many different things. Okay. I've watched and read so many different characters introduced in so many different ways. So you kind of know what you like. Yeah, you know what you like and you know what you don't. And I have a group of people in my book club that I'm close with and we all read the same type of books. So like I said, when I sat down to write it, which made me write it in the first place, I got fucking COVID for the second time. <laughs> Two time offender, yeah. COVID offender. Around Christmas. Needed and more blueberries. Yeah. The second time I got it, I felt great, but I was stuck in the house. And I, I started messing around. I, I drew a big map. And I was like, okay, I'll call this country this. And I'll okay. call this country that. And these people come from here. And these people come from here. And the only way you can get here is if you follow this river here. And if you want to cross the mountains, you go this way. So you'll pick up on stuff like that when you actually read the book. But that's how I started. I just drew a map. Okay. Two lands, mountains, beach, grassland, farmland, whatever. Right? And then I put markets, ports, markets, Weapons, all this stuff that you would need in Almost a, like in a civilization. The world yeah, literally and, you know, making the world. Come and up. then you fill in the people. That's the characters right. came last. Oh shit! The characters came after I named the countries. The characters name came after I named the families. The characters came after I knew the ending. <laughs> and then the characters came. So you had the ending in mind, like you knew how it was gonna. Start. I knew how it was gonna end before I finished writing. Probably. Five, six chapters. I knew how I wanted this one to end. And we talked about this. This is actually the first installment in the Raven and Fire series. Mm-hmm. And it's right on the book. Book one. Uh, so yeah. how... how Because if you if you know anything about books, the, the premise of the goal of a book is to try to make it intense. Like you're talking about the world so engulfed and that when the fan base kind of sees it, they almost start themselves to see the movie play out. Right. Right, and we all know J.K. Rollins made a killing Facts. in her world. So hopefully, like if you can build something that will set up a world that you can freely dive into and go into, right. is is that the goal in mind? That was the goal. Um, once I saw now, my did you name consciously on the book, write it that way, or it just organically. No, nah, I didn't consciously write it that way. Consciously, I wrote it like if I was going through an adventure like okay. something that like i can never go through but like this shit would be cool if i went through it right? so when someone's reading the book they're putting themselves in the characters you can there's a character for all different types of people in it okay if you're a, if you're a scumbag and you're a villain there's a character for you in there if, if you're you want to be the good guy and the hero that's conflicted there's a character in there there's women in there there's all kinds of stuff in there there's sex in there hey there's all kinds of stuff in the book titties in a book because all this stuff <laughs> is like 
all this stuff is a world. What I wanted it to be, yeah. right? I can't I can't write a book where characters don't have sex in it. Did you Doesn't have to, make sense. Did you have to pull back writing the book because you say, hey, maybe this is too developed for this character. This might be like a second book kind of deal like did you ever notice fighting those struggles i didn't think about it that or was way. this like a seamless kind of like let me just put pen to pad and just start writing that's how it that's how it started and luckily it, it finished that way i didn't have to kind of curb back anything that i wanted until the end okay because my ending the way i wanted to end this book i was like okay if i end it this way then like i should be okay as far as um setting it up for the next one i didn't want to give away too much but i also didn't want to give away too little in it so it it I would say that depending on the kind of person that you are, where I end it, you'll either be like, son of a bitch, or like, <laughs> why did he do that? Right? Like, so it just depends. But there's no, the, the one thing that I did want to make sure that I got in the book for certain was like, there's no uh, slow points in it. Okay. Right? Like, a lot of books take five chapters to develop before something even happens. That shit drives me crazy. That's a, another benefit of reading a lot of books. You know exactly how you don't want your book to be. Okay. And exactly how you don't want it to go. I don't want to read a book and I'm 12 chapters in and nothing's happened yet. We're still setting up. Like, it's like we can make things happen while we set up, right? Now, speaking of that, like 12 chapters and stuff like that, and this is a 300-page book. I'm going to keep referencing how thick this <laughs> book is. As someone... Because you have a lot of inner circles. Mm -hmm. Like you were talking about you're in a book club right. and you you have us crazy motherfuckers right. doing all this. But how easily digestible is some is, is a book like this for someone who's getting back into reading or just picking up a book for the first time? Like That's is the language something that... That's a good question. <laughs> like so, that someone's going to grasp? Right. So I did put a definitions page at the back. Okay. Just in case. Just in case you're like, just what is case, this word? <laughs> like, just in case what this word is. I did put a definition page in the back. And also, my wife is just getting back into reading. Okay. So she was one of the people that I tested it on after, you know, after I was done with it and everything like that. I tested with her and she was like, listen, the font, the spacing, oh, and the so way. Oh, stuff like that is important. Yeah. If you look at a book, I have a book over there. We I should have showed you before we started, but there's a book over there. It's 700 pages. And if you look at the font. It's like really hard. It's like it's really small. It's really hard. So to it's a lot read. of words. It's a lot of words, right? For a person that's just getting back into it, that's, that's a nightmare. Book, yeah. There's no way. But if you open mine and you look at the word and the spacing, it gives the the kind of. Pace Am I gonna need that? Terms you know that book. What is the the divider like? Insert like nah, line by nah, line. Nah, 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 <laughs> like, nah. But that's the that's the benefit of like if you open it. That's the benefit should, of the. You spacing. should actually put like a little axe or a spear <laughs> in there yeah, as a bookmark. I should have. But there's like that stuff was important as well. So when I was formatting it, I had to think about that. Like, I know a lot of people that read, but I want people that are just getting back into reading not to feel overwhelmed when they pick it up. For sure, because if somebody's supporting you for the first time, and like we said, like we don't want this book to just be something that collects dust on your shelf. Right. This is a book that can get you back into reading. For sure. And, and make you want that second book. And the more feedback you get from that, it makes you want to write that next book. Right, because everybody always says, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't mean to keep bringing her up, but they always say like, "Hey, how come you haven't written the next book? Right, like right, they right. filmed movies without yeah, her yeah. writing the next book." For sure, for sure. Right, so it's kind of like how, and we can touch on like how you wanted to write a book for so long, and mm -hmm. what has made you want to write a book for so long. I've I've wanted to do it for a long time, and honestly, what made me do it is just where I am in life right now, and just doing it. Just getting it done. I fully regret not doing it years ago. I should have just sat. When I had a shitload of time, <laughs> I should have just sat down and just like, I just wasn't ready. Yeah. Clearly. I just wasn't ready to do it. Well, there's a lot of hurdles and all that stuff. So you're mentally ready, like whether you can develop right. characters. And then there's, are you financially ready to, to take over? That's a big part of it. No, I, I didn't. That part I took for granted while I was writing it. And then my mom actually self-published as well. Oh, okay. Um, she actually published the book too, but she went a different route in the way that she published. She did more of a, you know, uh, pay less now, try to recoup on the back end later. I did more of a pay now. I'm not really worried about the money I recoup later because of the financial situation that I'm in where I'm able to kind of move around a little bit more. So I had that to refer to and I, I, I saw the way she did it and I was like, that's a cool way to do it, but 
I don't have time to be selling my book out of the back of my car for sure every day. Yeah, like, that you convenience know what I mean? and this book is available on all platforms. You can pre-order it now. By the time you hear go this, pre-order it now. Get it. I'm all trying to major, get my book. book on the. I'm trying to climb that that Amazon fantasy list. And we will kill your feed until that shit. Like happens. I want to get that shit like. On the list, like within the hundreds, like I want to be like on the list. Like, How be awesome. often do people release books? Like, is that like a thing? Like, is is it like music? Like, you know, like every day you can refresh the music tab, and there's do people release books like that? Yes, yes. Um, at the length of mine, probably not. Okay. Um, and at the success of them, no. It's usually it usually takes six months to a year to, to complete one. Do you have like your Four your classes. authors that like when you see that book, you're like, oh, this is gonna yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah, I have, there's stacks over there from the same author, there's stacks under my table from the same author. So that's kind of like the goal, that's, yeah. that's the... That's the, that's, that's, that's the... So when people see Coel Alexander... Yeah, they oh, and then they know like, yo, oh shit, that one's coming out such and such. Gotta get it. You know what I mean? So I'm just happy I was able to sit down and do it. A lot of it came from just, there wasn't anything that wasn't there that's there that's here now, besides just growth, I guess, and just experiencing more things, but... It was just sit down and do it. Like, that was it. And, and that's the point I kind of want to drive home to a lot of people because it's like, I've known you for a long time. I consider you one of my brothers, one of my good friends. And you go into Barnes & Noble, you look at Amazon, you look at Kindle, and there's countless books everywhere, mm-hmm. right? For you to put your mind to something and actually get it done to this format where we're going to eventually have a release party and you're... You're, yeah. you're legit signing autographs yeah. with the intent of, hey, this is going to be worth a lot more yeah. than what you're paying for yeah. it now. That was someone else's idea, by the way. It wasn't mine. It, it's fine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love the vanity of it. I love it was it. not mine, dude. Because it, it is that. It is that. Like, hey, I'm I'm not just investing my time, my thoughts. Yeah. It's it's more than that, right? Yeah. It's tangible now. It didn't you're feel like that. You're able to go to a Barnes & Noble yeah. and see your book. It's crazy. On thing, you know? Like, it didn't feel like that until I... I like opened the box and because people were saying that to me as soon as I finished it and I turned it in and I told my family, uh, we went to like dinner or something like that. I told the family, I'm like, yo, I finished it, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh my God, we got to throw a party. We got to do this. I'm like, whoa, 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 what? No, 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 no. I don't want to do none of that shit. And my wife's like, you have to, like, you have to. You she's have like, to. people don't finish the, like, she's like, how many people you know that have done it? <laughs> And I was like, I mean, my mom's done it, but she was like, her book was like a hundred something pages. No disrespect to it, but she's like, what you've done is completely different. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't go the write the book about your life path. Yeah. Because we've like, talked about this off camera, yeah. like how interesting that book exactly. could be. And I feel that like everybody has a story For and sure. everybody's everybody lives in a world where they can say like, my life is a movie or my life is a story. Right. But when you're diving and you're building a world like this, yeah, it's a whole different creative bug. For sure. You know? It would actually be harder for me to write a book about my life. There's so many missing pieces. There's so many gaps. There's so many different points of view. For sure. There's so many ways where, like, I hate hearing about those books where somebody writes it a certain point of view and the other person's like, that's not how that's it happened, not happened at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, your vantage point is a big that, deal. That, yeah. And that would a hundred percent happen with me if I decided to write a book about my life. There are so many moving pieces. I tell people all the time. It's like, just like you can't look at your parent, look at the age you are now, and then think about how old they were at that exactly. age. Exactly. You thought they were the oldest person in the world. Exactly. And like I, they, and were they were just, that old. They were not thirty five year old dude literally. trying to get through the next day. But back to get into this book. Let's talk about now, like actually taking the steps of getting it done. Did you look into the process of how, like what was your the first step? Uh, was it writing or was it researching how to get it out? First step was completing it because I didn't know for sure if I would be able to do it. Okay. Um, I didn't know for sure if I would be able to make something cohesive. I didn't know if I'd be able to make something that made sense. And I got a lot of feedback from my book club that helped me out. They read a couple of chapters and they were like, well, this is good. Keep going. And I was like, and you were able okay. to keep that in for a long time. Like I talked to yeah. you almost every day. That's what I mean. We talked every day. I never, I didn't and tell you. You didn't say yeah until it was done. Yeah. It wasn't necessary at yeah. the time because I also didn't want to run around saying, "I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book." And then like you come to me a couple. Life months happens, later, and what happened? Yeah. To your book. And you're like, yeah. "Yo, what happened to your book?" And I'm like, "Uh, well, you know, I started, and then I just sound like one of them, one of those people. Like you know what I mean? And there's no disrespect to those people because life happens, and, life. and different things go on. I kept it, 
My wife knew because the only thing I was doing when I was coming home was sitting on a couch and writing. We go says she go to sleep. I'd sit in the bed and write. Like this was the this was the process for months, over and over and over and over. I see you guys on Friday. We podcast. I go home. She be sleeping. I'd write. And just keep going over and over. Was it all on like the computer? Was it pen to paper? Some of my laptop. Some of my laptop. Some of my phone. Like if I was out and I didn't have my laptop with me, I'd write. Does that like is your brain always going? Yeah, I didn't like mid shower. For sure, I wasn't stopping. I wasn't sleeping. (laughs) I wake up in the middle of the night. I have characters are alive to you at that point. Because once you once you do that, it's it it turns real. So like I wake up in the middle of the night from having a dream, and I grab my phone. Like, and Kyle was like, what the fuck? Are you, like, what are you doing? And who, I was like, who that bitch? Yeah, right? Who is that? <laughs> who you text in the middle of the night? I'm like, I'm not texting anybody. I had a dream. I got to write it down. Because if I don't write it down, I'm going to forget. Yeah. But the only thing I'm thinking about is my book. So everything I'm dreaming about is how I want it to end. How is this supposed to go? How's the next scene supposed to go? So the writing took course over all of the preparation of actually putting it out. When did you tell yourself, okay, I'm done with this book? I remember the day. There's got to be a conscious point where you go like, yeah. I'm overwriting now. Yeah. I remember the day we were getting ready. To, it was a Sunday. We were getting ready to get up and go to Sunday dinner. It was in February. like I think it was like two weeks after the Super Bowl or some shit like that. And I was sitting there typing and she's like, come on, we got to go. And I was, like, I was like, I'm done. And she's like, what? I was like, I fucking finished it. I was like, I'm fucking done. She's like. What are you talking about? I was like, no, I'm fucking finished. Like, I finished this shit. I'm, I'm done. It's, it's over. The, the ending just came to you, and it yeah. was like you knew that. I, I wrote like, in. I was like, boom, and I, I hit the period, and that was it. I was, <laughs> I was done. And I, I, I and I, I felt fucking great that day. And then again, it didn't hit me. It was still like, okay, you finished it. I was already doing research in the midst once I got close to the end. Because now were, that you I knew, knew you were yeah, I knew I was gonna finish it. How but, many chapters is the book? Uh, Probably like 30 something. 30 something. <laughs> the first couple chapters go quick. Okay. Um, because that's another thing. Like, in the midst of you reading the book, you can tell when I started and how I finished. Okay. The, even the writing is different. Like, the writing oh, kind of Oh, so changes. you see the development. Yeah, you see the book. development in the writer. Everything is authentic, right? I didn't go. I didn't go through and try to reconstruct everything I did before. I wanted to just do it just, like, as raw as possible. Okay. Right? In, in the midst of, like... When I tell you when I was writing it, I didn't space anything out. I didn't do nothing like that. I obviously did that for for the finished product, but like when I was writing it, it, it was, was just, just one giant paragraph. Paragraph. <gasps> like I'm, I'm gonna read it like this. It was eighty eight. <laughs> it was eighty. It was like eighty nine pages, single spaced, just a giant <laughs> fucking paragraph. It was crazy, but uh, that took precedent over um, researching how I was gonna get it out. And then I did some research. I. Found juggle her. between do two or three. Do you want to talk about that aspect of like? Do you want to help anybody? We can. So I'll, I'll give I'll give everyone a caveat of, uh, of this. Um, I'll tell you one thing: make sure that you have some money on hand because it it is expensive to self publish. Um, two. And did you look at the other option? Like if you're if you're not self publishing, like if you're outsourcing it to somebody else, it's so hard to do that. Now you're not a uh, reputable. You're not, yeah, anymore. right. You're not reputable for one and two. There's so many. It's like music. Okay. There's just so many books coming out every other, you know, week or yeah. whatever. It just didn't seem. It didn't make sense. You control your destiny this way as well. For sure. What you put in is what you get. If I decide to market, that's what I get. They've done their part. They're basically just distribution. Yeah. They're gonna distribute it. Just do your part and make sure people buy it. Now, were you in between a couple different companies? Like, were you? Nah, it was a kind of easy. There was one who stood out. Yeah, yeah. The the company I went with stood out because they did more than another Another company company. was going to do. And let's talk about what what are you getting from it? Like, what is the the partnership with this? Like, what it entails? Like, because. Ladies and gentlemen, you can buy the book hardcover if you like the feel right. of paper and the texture. If you read a lot better, if you're looking at a computer all day long and your eyes just can't handle the Kindle or the, yes, or the you phone, can go you can get the physical copy. Get the copy. physical, yes. Now, there's also the people who love their Kindles. You take it like you, read it on the beach, whatever right. you have. You read it on your work phone or whatever. You can get the digital version too. Obviously, two different price points. But right. Talk to us about how those options even came about. So, those options come about... Mainly because of the company that I went with. Okay. Right? Now, I was going to go with another company, but the only thing that they provide for you is uh, ebook service. And me, personally, I don't like ebooks. 
I need to hold the book. But I notice some authors that I read only release ebook. And I realize they only release ebook because they go through said company. Okay. They're also only sold on awesome. by said company. Also, said company makes you only sell through them for the first 90 days that your book is out. And then you can decide if you want to put it in on other So that, that's a, that's a actually a real good internal debate because you start thinking to yourself, if I'm more accessible to all these right. places, mm-hmm. will more people consume my book? Right. Or am I just driving all my potential influence and exactly to this one source exactly so i would have went that route if i believed that everyone would purchase all ebook mm-hmm. i don't believe that i could be wrong mm-hmm. maybe i'm right i don't no, know but, I, but I know me personally having the option is right okay. me personally i don't like it so if i don't like it i'm not gonna do it for somebody else i don't even like it myself do they make you pick is like the page like the texture of the like you can pick the texture of your you pages know? all of this stuff like, some people like to feel like the bible yeah, all of this stuff shit. all of this stuff costs so like if you have expensive taste right even hardcover right so this is a soft binding you can get the hard binding if you want it costs you can get the glossy pages if you want it costs you can get the bigger binding with the bigger pages whatever it can, all that stuff cost yeah and right? we were also talking about because it is a beautiful cover man like the yeah, artwork is is awesome i love this as as just I saw looking it. and the, the 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 title of the book the cover of the book does an amazing job of giving you that glimpse of what we're about to get into yeah. right yeah. The, the name is simple but acts the acts and the spear right yeah you're looking at the font it's beautiful font yeah. interwoven with the two weapons and then you yep. see the actual fire yep. coming out of the spear yeah, 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 and the yeah, yeah. so it's already telling me like i Something. my brain yeah already your brain's going. already working someone's man. at war here what's going there's a on? clan right. that's fire there's a clan that's ice so they did a phenomenal job with the with the illustration of the cover mm-hmm. you picking this cover we were talked about the in depths of how this cover came to right. be even the subtle details of like the and interwoven in between the letters, like I, I think it. you did a phenomenal job. I loved it, man. All this it was stuff. great. I loved it, and this is this is one of those things where I did this one for the first one, but you know, for the second one, I want to reach out to somebody who does, does art, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Who can recreate my next vision or whatever the case may be. Because I, I asked I you, I'm like. Do. Yeah. Do you have do you know what the characters look like? Right. You said 100. percent Yeah, yeah. So it in my is one brain, yeah. Things that like in my brain, 100. percent Reach out to somebody who can work with that vision and right. someone local, someone who follows us, whatever. Maybe right. reach out to you and say, hey, 100. I read your book. This is what I think your character looks like, and how great would that be if you guys yeah. flooded him with you fucking know, mad weird mad art, weird <laughs> like artwork, mad weird fan like, art? That'd be dope. That'd be dope. That'd be 100. Like, dope. hey, this like is it. what she looks like to me. This is what he looks like to me. For sure, 100%. and you might be like, "Yo, I never even thought of it like yeah. that." Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Like that would be cool, bro. We encourage that. We encourage that. I want that. I want. I want like, all of that. I want all of it. I want people to send me exactly what you think the characters may look like. What you even think? I want. I honestly just want people to be brutally honest about what they think. As as much as I want to sell it, and as much as I'm, I talk about that list, and I want to be on the top list, right? Being on that top list means that you sold a lot of copies, right? But I've read a lot of those books on the top of those lists. And the stories I don't like. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, like, I honestly want people to enjoy the story. I want people to enjoy what I wrote and realize that it came from me. And this is something that I actually wrote down and I cared about. I I want you to be that. That's what I want. More than me selling a bunch of copies. I've always had t- tough time when I'm reading something to get the, um, what do they call it? The affliction of the words? Like the intent of how it's supposed to be read? Okay, Is so this, like the the emotion like the emotion behind yeah, how, yeah. the characters and things like and, but that? But that could just be because like the books that I was reading was for school and not Possible. for like yeah. for, for my books. My book has a lot of dialogue in it, so it comes off more as... Um, it would come off more as a screenplay or a script okay. than it would come off as a story. There are chapters where it's just all building something completely detailed. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, battle uh, scenes in the book. How do you write a battle? Battle scenes are are cool. Battle scenes are cool to write because you know what's going on in your head. Yeah, but, but putting it down it is very it's it's difficult to put it on your head because when you watch a battle scene on TV, like you can see everything going. that's going on. But when you're writing in the book and you're writing from first person. I can only see what the character can see. Okay. I can't see 
everything else that's but you know what's going on but you know yeah but you it's really hard to get the reader to see what you see yeah if you don't write it correctly the right way so how many times did you have to go over those key things like those those took the longest to write the dialogue we talk all the time so that's easy. my dialogue isn't like i don't have a, i don't have a yeah. dialogue i talk too much i don't have a dialogue problem <laughs> that's right? what god says yeah he said i talk too much so that's fine but the uh the fight scenes and the sex scenes were the hardest things to write so i had to actually research on how people get into the mode to like write break that down right like how do you get into the mode to write a sex scene right and the only advice that i got the common advice that I got from writing both of those type of scenes, because they come with a lot of emotion in it, is once you start, don't stop. Okay. Just write. Just get it out. Don't take a break. Just go through it later. Just write it. It's just write what you just write what you think, write what you feel, and just go. Don't even you're not in the mood to write a fight scene, but if you're gonna start it, go through it. Don't stop. Don't think about anything else. Just keep going, right? Those are the hardest ones to write, and those are the ones that have the most detail in it. The fight scenes have the most detail in it. There's fight scenes in there that you won't expect. There's turns in the story that you won't expect. There's betrayal in the story. There's love in the story. There's family in the story. There's so many different things. So you legit, like, just hearing you talk about it, you legitimately enjoyed this process. I loved it. It was awesome. I already started the second one. There you go. <laughs> I like that. I already started the second one. Just because I, I, I couldn't stop. Couldn't put yeah. it down. All right? I'll hit a wall eventually. And until that wall comes, I'm not going to stop. For what? Doesn't make any sense. I will tell you, though, that the second one's going to be significantly longer than that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm easing my way into it. it won't I'm be, definitely going to take me a lot longer to finish this it won't than be, a lot of the it our, won't be three. counterparts It here. won't be like 300. It's probably going to be like five. All right, I'll I'm thinking it'll probably be like five. I'll work but like same font. I'll pay a little bit more money to make it easier for people to read. <laughs> then people shrink the letters and it's cheaper. <laughs> give people more, more well, that's people. what people do. They shrink the letters so it's cheaper. Uh, I found that out in my my author trials and, trials and tribulation. If you shrink it, it's less pages. Anything else you want to so it's uh, cheaper. get into before we open the floor for Q&A? Um, no, nah, man. Just uh, like I said, just to reiterate what I said before, it's more than about me selling a bunch of copies. It's me just like hoping people enjoy something that I put out. When I started selling Demigod, it wasn't because I wanted to make a shitload of money. It's because like I thought I came up with something cool and I thought people would like it. For sure. Right. Yeah. But I'm I'm trying to. I got I got like you said I got a crazy circle of friends. I got you guys. I got friends from high school. I got friends from work. I got friends from everywhere. All different kinds of walks of life. Can I get them all to 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 read, read this? Yeah. That would be crazy. My dad told me he hasn't read a book since ninth grade. <laughs> I, I think he's I'm like, gonna... yo, I'm gonna read this shit. I was like, yeah, he was in ninth grade way longer, than <laughs> a long time, <laughs> a long time. But that's awesome, but, man. It's, it's yeah, awesome no, to man, think that's that it. You're introducing books back into people's lives because, yeah, like, man. we've talked in a intense lot. about like actually your passion for reading what you want to do with reading for sure and i used to read as a child before again for either school purposes i never found it i started late but the way you talk about it again looking at the cover the the passion you you speak about your characters it i'm really looking forward to reading this book i can't wait man it's gonna be dope i'll give you a little glimpse of what it's about i guess before Before that can you tell us one of the characters in the book like who is someone that inspirationally either from whatever you took to develop this character when we read that character we're gonna be like this kind of feels like x y or z right so i i see myself in this there's there's a i did like a people but people wouldn't notice if you didn't know me um in 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 earlier in life i guess i'll say right so the main character cole obviously named after myself but it was a rendition on my name because people always pronounce my name wrong okay People always call me Cole. Like that's the, <laughs> nobody says my name right, so they call me Cole. So the first thing I was thinking, I was like, I'll call him Cole. That'd be dope. Like whatever. <laughs> right? The uh, the female character in the book, Octavia, um, I came up with from um, there was a, a Roman myths and mythology book that I read, and it was like just this off brand, like extra character in the book, and I felt like she, like 
when I was reading the story, I was like, damn, yo, she was kind of important, but they didn't give her like no kind of light. No kind of light. And I like that name. So I was like, right, I'll roll with that. Um, there's another. So the, the Cole character reminds me of myself now. Like older. The character in the book's only 20 at the time. A hardened 20. Yeah. I guess a hardened 20, you could say. But in his mannerism, the way he talks. He's only lived to 30 out there. That's what I'm saying. The way he talks and the way he acts. It reminds me of myself now. So he has a best friend that's introduced in the book that reminds me of myself prior to that. Oh, okay. Funny, impulsive, quick to anger, things like that. Things that, things that are that's part cool of the That's cool that book. you're able to tap into those kinds of things. And yeah. the realization of the two sure. personalities that you've you've kind of grown through. Because me and that person are still best friends. Like, I'm still that you person. You tap into that guy. But, like, I'm not that person anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still that person. Yeah. Like, I'm not quick to anger anymore, but I can talk to that person and I can write about that person okay. because I know that person. Not a big deal, right? But always have good intentions. Both people have good intentions, but they go about it different ways. Gotcha. The female character that I wrote was just uh, just a collection of like women that I know, pretty much. Like smart, still impulsive, still quick to judge, all these things that like I meet different kind of women and just come up with this kind of thing, right? I didn't really hone in on a specific woman writing it because I don't want those problems. So, you know. Yeah. It, I don't want nobody saying I wrote about fantasy. a certain type yeah, of woman. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I didn't. It was just a collection, collection. of different traits well, you're gonna pull and things from like that. Even if it's like other, like like you're saying, book, book characters, right. movie characters. You pull from a bunch of different things, right? There's There's a lot of heroism going around and things like that. So there's a bunch of that. But I didn't want to go the traditional route that everyone goes now. Honestly, any, every book that I read now has a, a female lead in it. And there's nothing wrong with that because I love those books. Those are my favorite books. I buy them all. And I read them all and I love the stories of them and all. But I can't write from that perspective. I'm not a woman. Yeah, I, I can only write from my perspective. I can write from her point of view, from different things that I've learned from women and feel. But I can't dedicate the book Written from a man, from a, a female's perspective, because I'm not a woman. Is There's this no way book I set, it. one, is it on Earth and in a different yeah, time period, it or is it some other Earth? It's on Earth. It takes place, uh, I would say, uh, early, um, I'd say, I guess, say early 6th century kind of thing. Where people worship Vikings, other Romans, things like that. Mythologies. And um, like that. But it is on Earth, but... The, the basic constructs of what we believe are kind of suspended. It's situated in that time. No electricity, no plumbing, no... It's hard living. Confusing things like that, right? Hard <laughs> so the, wor the world that you built within this book is easy to put put the reader in there? For like sure. The reader, like within the first two chapters, they 100%. go, oh, I know. I can dump you right in there. You right? can dump you yeah. right in there. Yeah, 100%. Just like the book, we're going to leave you guys on a cliffhanger <laughs> you got to read the book to find out what's you going do. on we are going to open up the floor we got a live studio audience here anybody got any uh <laughs> cute questions before we uh wrap this up all right let me pull no, that okay. up i do so we got uh, some we, got we don't some have mic set off on the thing but let me go into here we are in my home my beautiful bo welcome Wes asks, what is the age of this book? Is it adult and adult only or teenagers can read it as well? Yeah, like what do you suggest? Uh, I would suggest uh, between uh, probably 17 and up. 17 and up? Yeah, I would say 17 and up. Well, these kids up, nowadays are a lot. That's why I would say 17. But are they into books? Prior to that, I would say if we were thinking like before what books are released now, I would probably say like 20 and up. But 17 and up is, is pretty good based on what you're watching on TV in the first place anyway. But 17 and up is, is a good good question, Wes. I appreciate that. People ask me about that, too. That's, Wes. That's a good question, for sure. Uh, he also asked, did you get writer's block making the book? And if so, how did you go about it? Um, there were only two or three points where I did get writer's block um, in the book. And I tried to do some research on it. And I actually treated it like when I hit a block doing anything else. I walk away. I walk away, and then when it hits again, it hits. Because if you if you try to if you try to force it and fix it in, you end up forcing something mad cliche, and you know it just doesn't make sense. My wife read the first couple chapters of the book, and she was like, "Holy shit, I didn't see that coming." <laughs> okay. I was like, okay. I was like, "All right, cool." So that 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 is cool. Okay, that's good. I I think I saw. Kind of touched problem. on this a little bit, uh, but he did ask, "What made this the year? What made this year the year to write this book?" 
this year was the year to write it. Um, like I said before, just based on where I am in life now, and um, yeah, COVID, so kinda, yeah. COVID, and it was um, I needed some. I needed to do something new. I, I I've I've done. I've done a bunch of different things and I was saying this to this is it's actually a really good question inside of a different question. Uh my brother in law actually asked me like like why like why do you do all the things that you do? Why do you he take was on like, so you much? You do so much shit. Like you do so much, right? And I was like honestly growing up they tell you like my grandma told me all the time, like you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college, right? I didn't even get to choose what I get to go to college for. It was like Oh, you're good with computers. You got to go for that. I never once got to sit down and, and think about like what I actually wanted to do until... I think people don't even uh, realize or, or nobody find does. their passions to tell you don't. on. Yeah. But then like my life broke down, and then I didn't have anything, so I had to just scramble just to get my shit back on track. And then I hit a, a place in the last couple of years where I can actually sit down and say, what do you like to do? What have you done that you generally enjoy doing? And you're actually in that perfect window, the Goldilocks kind of effect. Exactly. Where you're just, you have responsibilities, but none of responsibilities that can take away from something else. Right. You can actually devote a little bit of time. Exactly. So if you are someone who's out there and you're and you're telling yourself, like, I don't have time to do that, or I can't do this, look at look at your life, the circumstances you're life, in, and sure. what can you compromise in? If something is just unwavering, then, the, then it is for what sure. it is. It's not worth it. It's no, not worth it's it. Not. But if there's something that you can find how to get into what, whatever yeah. it is, eating right, fitness, yeah. uh, reading, writing, even if it's getting outside and taking a walk for a fucking half an hour. For sure. Who knows? But it, these one-on-one -on -one sessions have always been that. Find a way to inspire something. Someone could come across this and say, if he could do it, why can't I? Right. Right. I had a bunch of friends who told me, I had a, fr a really good friend of mine. He was the best man at my wedding. He told me, I remember we were like heavy into playing video games at one point. And he just totally flipped it and sold all of his video games. And he was like, bro, you have no, much, you have no idea how much time I spend playing video games. He's like, I could be doing something else. I like to play video games. <laughs> I don't and and I had to I had to think about what he said. He went to the ex, the extreme. Yeah. And I was like there's no way that I can live this life and not still manage to do the things that I like to do without taking care of my responsibilities. We're similar me and him. We have like uh we have real like like addictive personalities. Like we find something that we like and we kind of like just fucking like stick to it, yeah. right? I think that's why we get along so Exactly, cuz we do the same shit all the time. But it's like I had to find a way where I was like, if I manage my time right, I could definitely take care of all my responsibilities and still do shit that I like. There's no way in this world, in this life. <laughs> that's why one, that's one of your pet peeves? Yeah, that's why, that's why, this is why the time thing makes me so angry. Yeah. Because time is so fucking important and you don't realize time is so important until you want to do a bunch of shit and you realize you have no time to do it. Well, I think you brought that up a little earlier where you made time. Yeah. Right? And, and that's something that we'll also hone into because like you said- we pot on a Friday, get home late, mm -hmm. might be tired. You got a you got a partner to deal with and make sure that they're okay. And like mm -hmm. you coming home at X time and then thinking to yourself, well, I still can work on myself for another yeah. two hours. Yeah, and then I'll be day. I'll be fine. And I'll just you know it's a Saturday. I will go to sleep. I will wake up. And, People will say it's a sacrifice, you know. but in reality, it's not a sacrifice if you're enjoying what you're doing. Exactly. Right. If I'm having a good time doing it. And I'm not hurting anybody. The last question I problem, won't get into that much because we kind of did touch on it. But it, just to read uh -huh. it off, it says, so this this is the kind of book <laughs> for yourself that dealing with changes in your life. We kind of spoke to that like sure. with the two characters. 100%. Kind of. Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's just a big, it just felt really good to uh, be able to put that out and be I enjoyed able to show different. You know? Like I said, Do you it's have not any an questions? interview, it's a conversation. Do you have a question? No? <laughs> you got some? You good? With that yeah, being man. said, salud. Cheers, man. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. Cheers. Everybody. Thank Cheers, you, guys. Everybody. Remember to get the book available yes, everywhere on all the platforms. Yes. April 20. Pre-order that shit right now. You can actually get the link right now. This video will come out on time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to drop it. Uh when I feel like it. Get the hard copy. But it'll be before the, you know, before Get the, the digital release. if you prefer. It's there. There's no Buy them both. Buy them both. Buy them both. Support. Support. Cheers. <laughs>
Ooh, Ooh wee. Wee, that's been sitting. Jeez. Oh, that's been sitting. <laughs> Was they put tequila in my tequila? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me.